Marina Lane. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Who made the word salutations famous? Huh? Maybe Winnie the Pooh? No. Charlotte's Web. Oh, That's how she greeted everybody. It was, it was a big deal in the book. Now, where is that memory coming from? I mean, that just kind of... I think that's Bam. Huh? I think Charlotte's Web is Bam. Well, everything else has been banned. Why not? Yeah. And of course, that makes everybody want to watch everything. Right. Well, I, I remember sitting in a classroom, listening to the teacher read Charlotte's Web, and just loving every minute of it. Um, 2023 East Tennessee Episcopal Church Women's Annual Gathering. I have information on it. On October 21st, beginning at 9 a.m. at Church of the Ascension. So keep that in mind. Who's, who, who would be interested in going to the... I've, I've gone in the past. Okay, here, you can have this nice flyer. It's great. It's a very, very pretty flyer. I think our donut. Oh, really? Good. It's been a, uh, well, it's been a terrible week in terms of the world and uh, violence and conflict. And uh, people are taking sides, choosing where they're going to stand with this issue. And, I stand on the side of decreasing violence. I'm a veteran. I even used to uh, teach people how to uh, shoot guns safely out of the range. But I gave it up last year because I didn't feel like I could support the use of guns the way it's happening now. It's just really crazy out there. And uh, felt like it was wrong for me to support that. So I didn't do it anymore. I resigned. And I'm okay with that. Um, I think we all have to make decisions about uh, how we see the world. And the conflict certainly in Israel and the God of strength is real. It's so really, really difficult to listen to. Because you want to blame somebody. Uh, who, who do you blame? You know, it's the ladies and babies and grandmas and grandpas are dying in this thing. So let's let's be praying for them today. Let's, let's keep in mind um, all those folks there and all the folks here that are worried about it. Because I'm sure we got people in, in Knoxville who have relatives over there. So keep that in mind. Uh, I talked to uh, Henry this week. I took him to uh, the Eucharist. I'm always glad to see Henry. Uh, he's, he's really positive. He's really upbeat. Uh, he knows he's, he's fairly sick. He knows that. And uh, he's handling it with dignity and courage yeah. and a great attitude. Yeah. So I wanted to let you know that. Yeah. Uh, he's sick, but he's okay. I guess that's what I'm saying. Um, Safe Church, we'll be getting on that when we get past all the uh, fall holiday goodies that we're doing. And we're going to have a guest speaker for uh, St. Luke's Sunday, a uh, guest preacher. Um, and uh, Gail will be letting us know who that is. I think she already put it in the notes. That's next week. Yeah, it's next week. Um, any questions? Hi there. Hello. I'm so sorry. 
No, 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 I'm sorry, we couldn't be you. I, I just told her, you know, she's having bacon and eggs and just getting it down. It's Italian. Here's that last piece of toast. <laughs> this is karma, right? No, this was spectacular. spectacular. This was a, it was not spectacular. Right. You are
to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets, secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheep that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thanks be to God. We will read, we will read the 23rd Psalm in unison. The Lord, Lord is, is my shepherd. shepherd. I shall not be in want. He, he maketh me lie down in green pastures and leadeth me beside still waters. He revives my soul, and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who come to you have anointed my, my head with oil, and, and my cup is running full. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord.
Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my men, and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it, and went away to his farm, and other to his business. While the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all that they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed the man there was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. And the king said to the attendant, bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, for there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Validate our lives. 
So imagine that you are the wealthy landowner in ancient Israel in this uh, parable we have today. You have at least one son through whose marriage and subsequent children your dominance is going to increase, and his will too. That son and his progeny are your future. He and his children and their children will be the interest you earn, so to speak, on all the hard work you've done to support your family through his childhood. His first marriage, and he may have many in that time and place, is the next chapter in your tribe's story, if you're that bridegroom's father. It's the next chapter even in the stories of all your hired hands. The next chapter in the story of your neighbors, your village, the nearest city. This marriage matters. So you thank God for this son and this woman who are about to expand the legacy of your name if for no other reason. So you plan this wedding to demonstrate just how significant this marriage can become to all those lives around you. You choose livestock to be slaughtered and roasted for the wedding feast. You order your staff to choose the very best of vats of wine and plenty of them out of your storehouse. You put your wife in charge of directing the household staff to purchase and prepare fruits and sweets and cheeses and breads and salads and plan where you're going to dig the roasted pits, pits for the meat. <coughs> plan where you will serve the wine, where the side dishes will be set out. You map out where the tables are going to be set so that everybody can hear the toast you'll make and sing along with the musicians and grant, dance in grand circles together. You commission the local carpenter to make lavish and comfortable seats for the wedding party. You ask the tent maker in town to get busy crafting a chuppah. <coughs> <clears throat> that is that decorated wedding covering, like an awning or like the roof of a house, which covers the bride and groom and is a way of welcoming the bride into the family of the groom. And then you make out your list for the wedding invitations. Everyone who's anyone in your area, after all, you're a wealthy landowner. Everyone will come and share your joy and recognize that this marriage has lots of possibilities for everybody flourishing. And so each important person goes on the list. You have a scribe write out all those invitations to the elite, and you have your staff deliver them in person. And you total up all the yeses. A lot of them. This is going to be the first event for the rest of your lives. Chaim, you cheer to yourself. Time passes. Now everything is ready except for the fresh flowers that have to be put in the vases scattered around the space. The days, the days. You gather your staff, and it's customary at that place in time. You send them out once again with the standard reminder: it's time to get ready and come on to the banquet. Come to the wedding. None of the invitees can be bothered. No one responds. Obviously, they don't realize just how auspicious a day it is and how important it's going to be for the whole community and how much you look forward to their hugs and their handshakes and their good wishes. So you send out your staff again. Tell them everything's ready. There's only the best meats on the spits right now. The freshest fruits are there to bite into. The best wine I've ever gathered. There's lots of it. The whole village is favorite musician. So come on. Let's get started. But every one of those elite friends and their families who said they surely would be there, the ones on whom you as the landowner have counted, they just don't care. At this point, they can't be bothered. They don't want to hear any more invitations, and they even attack your servants to remind them to come to, to the wedding. What greater insult could there be to reject that hospitality? You're offering them the best of everything, and they respond with warfare. 
So, you're not above the fray. You fight back. You burn their village down. You send your servants out to gather in anybody else they can find on the streets, whether they heard of you or not. And it turns out ultimately to be a ragtag group. Partly poor born, maybe poorly educated. And they show up at the wedding feast. Finally, finally, your son and his future and your future are going to get some level of respect. Finally, somebody's going to be there to share the joy and honor your son and his wife and offer their gratitude for the grand feast you're offering. Except that one man over there. How did he get in here? Who does he think he is to come without a wedding robe? Now, we know this is a parable because it's not realistic, right? If you've been just called in off the street, how could you have your wedding robe? There you go. <laughs> After all that we have done to make this a beautiful and delicious and elegant love-filled occasion, how could he do that? Your patience is just gone. Grab him and bind him up and throw him out, out of the banquet, out of the village, out of our lives. So how did you decide to accept Christ's invitation to be here today at this wedding of heaven and earth, of God and humankind? you decide to do that this morning? How did you say yes? What made you give up a Sunday morning snooze or a luscious brunch somewhere to come and sing and pray and share scripture with the rest of us? Do you experience what we do here as a true celebration? A reason to get together and share our lives, the good times and the bad? I hope so. After listening to today's gospel, I can't help but wonder, how did you decide what to wear to church this morning? <laughs> did it depend on how long ago you did your laundry? That would be probably what I would have a problem with. Or maybe you have a few items you always wear to church, a couple of favorite jackets like my husband had. Or maybe you choose whatever outfit would work with your navy flats because you had walk in heels all week and you just can't stand up in the morning yet. Well, since 2002, I have to say it's been pretty easy for me to make those choices for Sunday morning. I have a uniform that pretty much solves it all. <laughs> and thank goodness, everything goes with black, right? Black shirt, $40, black shoes, that's what it takes. My seminary dean insisted that we wear black shoes. And if you're wearing socks, black socks. So we wouldn't be wearing plaid socks, red plaid socks, and cowboy boots <laughs> up front where everybody can see. <clears throat> Those of us who are serving here this morning are all wearing something that proclaims a basic message of our faith. It's called an L. It belongs like robe. That's what L means, white. And it's a color worn by the newly baptized, freshly washed from sin, given a clean start, newly born into a household of God. <coughs> And that's why we wear it. That's the whole point of the fact that our altar party is all dressed in white, one way or another. Spiritually speaking, we are all dressed in white, all dressed the same. We're all wrapped up in the forgiveness that we have come to know through Jesus' life and death and resurrection. We have become part of Christ's own body, we say. And so our out is the uniform of every baptized Christian, the identity that together we're supposed to grow together, love, grow into the loving likeness of Christ. And we who serve at the altar wear it as a kind of wedding garment to remind us all of the loving presence of God in human flesh. Today's gospel, of course, is not literally about anyone's clothes or what they should wear to weddings or to church. It's not literally about invitations. It's an allegory that Jesus told to the religious leaders in Jerusalem as he debated fiercely with them in the last few days before he was killed. Because he considered them to have become leaders who were unresponsive to God's invitation, to God's purposes. Like the elite in our parable today, who were invited to the king's celebration but ultimately did not show up. The religious leadership in Jerusalem 
Pharisees, Sadducees, chief priests, Herodians, they all resisted God's invitation in Christ to faithfulness as Jesus had presented it. As in today's parable, many of the non-elite did accept Jesus' invitation. They joined in the new life Jesus offers. Though in the parable, even one of them doesn't take it very seriously. He attends the grand function as a guest, but can't be bothered to change, change his clothing, really join in with what everybody else has gathered for. In other words, he doesn't take the king or the king's purposes very seriously when he too is cast out. Jesus, who as we remember, called both fishermen and rich young rulers to follow him, invites anyone and everyone, all of us sinners, to the banquet of God's purposes, the banquet that of an acting in our daily life, that our daily life is a marriage of heaven and earth, a marriage between God and the human race. So how do we act that out? How do we live it? Well, we remember that, that elf we all metaphorically wear day in and day out, remembering that we have been made Christ's own forever. And we hope to wear his presence among us and out in the world and through us wherever we go, every day. We lean back on that presence, that love bond between God and us and all humanity. And we allow Christ to be present in our work, in our loves, in our care for this world. In our prayer, we assume that God wants foremost to love us in ways that will heal us and heal others. We assume that God will invite us to grow in that loving presence as we open ourselves to it and put it on daily. We don't have to plan our own self-improvement so much as to remember to watch for God's invitation to act in love as Jesus did. God's invitation is to act in love as Jesus did. St. Augustine, centuries ago, in a sermon he gave to the newly baptized, reminded those new Christians that we're not only invited to this marriage of heaven and earth, we are empowered for it together. Every time we gather to receive the body of Christ and then go forth to be Christ's body, we are empowered for that. Augustine was teaching the newly baptized about how to receive the bread and wine. He said this, If you, therefore, are Christ's body and members, it is your own mystery that you place on the Lord's table. It is your own mystery that you are receiving. You are saying amen to what you are. Your response is your personal signature affirming your faith. When you hear the body of Christ, you reply, amen. And when you you are saying yes to being a member of Christ's body. Do that so that your amen may ring true. And then he adds, be what you see, receive who you are. Be what you see in the Eucharist and receive what you are. So amen to that. May we always remember our wedding garments and wear them ready to celebrate at every opportunity to participate, along with all those who have gone before us, in the wedding of God's life and ours and the world. Amen. Amen. Amen.
one substance with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary, and became a true human. For our sake, he was crucified and washed his He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people on page 5. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Remember that God can be present to us can transform our lives if we withdraw him. Let us pray. Gracious God, empower the church throughout the world in its life and witness. Break down the barriers that divide so that united in your truth and love, the church may confess your name, share one baptism, sit at one table and serve you with one accord. Light, Light of the world, be known to us. Guide the rulers of the nations. Move them to set aside their fear, greed, and vain ambition and to strive for justice and peace so that all your children may be free. Light of the world, be known to us. Hear the cries of those who are hungry, homeless, and suffering, those near and those far. Give those of us who consume most of the Earth's resources the will to reorder our lives so that all may have their rightful share of food, care, shelter, and fullness of life. Light of the world, be known to us. Look with compassion on all who suffer illness and distress, especially those we name now. Support them with your love and lead us to be healers for all we encounter in the name of Christ. Light of the world be known to us. <laughs> with thanksgiving, we remember those who have died, saints who bore witness to your life, especially those we name now. Allow us to preserve in faith, mercy, and love at the end of our lives to behold your glory. Light of the world, be known to us. O oh God, in your loving purpose, answer our prayers for your creation. By your grace, grant us the will and the wisdom to make this world new, and all for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We gather together in church of holiness when our sin separates us from God and one another. 
Let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor. Almighty God, you love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we have not listened. You walk away from your ways, and you bring wrath and our hearts to you. Almighty God, you love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we have not listened. You walk away from your ways, and you bring wrath and our hearts to you. We condone evil, prejudice, war, warfare, and greed. God of grace, help us to admit our sin, so that as you come to us in our mercy, we may repent, turn to you, and receive forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Redeemer. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all the truth, have mercy on us and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Be seated. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of abundant life. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that brings to eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, power, and glory for us now and forever.
You have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all the other people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love of the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Live without fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loved you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road. May God's blessing be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.